Greetings Commanders, Stealth Boy here. There comes a time when diplomacy isn't enough. For too long, scavengers throughout the galaxy have preyed upon the defenseless, swarming with the advantage of numbers. That ends today. You will confuse your enemies, hunt them down and destroy them one by one as you join me on the path to becoming a combat stealth expert. Welcome to Combat Stealth Basic Training. As always, if you like my guides and want to see more, please do like, subscribe and click the bell notification to get updates when I release more videos. Combat in Odyssey can be challenging for a new player. This guide is the first of a number of guides I will present that will allow you to overcome all of the various challenges Odyssey combats can throw at you. Combat Stealth Basic Training will help you assault any number of scavengers in an abandoned settlement, either during an Exterminate Scavengers mission or a Restore mission where scavengers are lying in wait for you when you arrive. One of the most difficult aspects of fighting scavengers alone is they will frequently swarm your location as soon as you start to attack. Openly engaging even just four to five scavengers can be rough on a new player, but I'm here today to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You do not need to upgrade lots of equipment either, and here's how you do it. The topics covered in this guide are 1. What gear you will need and how to equip it. 2. How to approach a settlement on a raid to exterminate scavengers. 3. A detailed strategy to prevent swarming and for wrapping up the fight. First up, I'll cover the gear that you'll need. The objective of choosing your gear is that you need to be able to kill an unshielded target before they raise their shields. For this, you only really need one weapon, and that is the Manticore Executioner. You do not need to upgrade it, but I recommend upgrading it to grade two, as this will allow you to one-shot kill any scavenger, even those of a higher rank. If you've not already got one, go to your nearest Pioneer shop and buy one. They cost 175,000 credits. I'd also recommend buying the Manticore Tormentor Grade 1 as a backup, although it's not strictly necessary. You can, of course, buy two Executioners if you opt to buy the Dominator Combat Suit, and I recommend you do this once you're familiar with the weapon. Again, this isn't strictly necessary, and you could do these missions in just a Maverick or even the Artemis Suit with just one Executioner. For this guide, I'll be using a Grade 1 Dominator suit. Always remember to keep your essential consumables stocked up. You'll definitely need energy cells, and it's always useful to carry medkits in case things go wrong. Once you've got your gear, remember to set up a loadout and equip it. Do this at your ship in the roll panel or via any concourse terminal. I've created a new loadout for this guide based on the Dominator suit with just the Executioner and the Tormentor. By all means, you can add another primary weapon as backup and I do recommend this for when you are still learning. Name your loadout and then remember to equip it like this. For this guide, I'll be taking a combat mission and I'm looking for a settlement raid, exterminate scavengers mission. This example is listed as threat two. Higher threat missions will mean higher ranked scavengers and at threat four and five, the grade one executioner will not one shot the targets. It's still possible to kill them in two shots before they raise their shields, but I recommend upgrading your execution to grade two, at least if you wish to take on higher threat missions. The actual number of targets you will be required to kill depends mostly on the type of settlement. This mission happened to include a total of 14 targets to kill, which is perfect for demonstration purposes, but not so great for a new player who isn't prepared. But we will be. Once you've arrived at your destination, always follow my first step rule of any mission. Get familiar with your surroundings. This layout is the small to medium industrial layout as shown on screen now. I call this layout industrial type two or the horseshoe due to its shape. We will spend most of our time on the rooftops and will remain around the edges of this layout as often as we can. And that is the first thing you need to remember when beginning. Enter the settlement to one side as opposed to entering it centrally. This minimizes the number of scavengers who will be alerted as you begin shooting. This is the route we will take to begin with. Make your way to the rooftop and pay attention to potential targets. 
Remember, they won't see you if they're not on your radar and they won't see you if they are at the very edge of the radar. Use this to your advantage. Here is my first target. I will approach them from above. They have no shields and this is the default state of all scavengers. This is the key to our strategy. They will die in just one shot without shields up. We will approach, crouching to stay silent and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. As you become more proficient with the execution, you can pick your targets even if they are moving because they're not moving quickly. However, as a beginner, I recommend patience, my second most important rule of stealth. Every scavenger will stop after a short while. This is your moment to strike. Approach from behind, take very careful aim. I recommend always aiming for center body mass. And when you're certain you'll hit, squeeze a trigger and move. This part is also key to this strategy. You need to start moving as soon as possible. With no audio masking on your weapon, your shot will make a loud sound and it will be heard for quite some distance by other scavengers. This is the first part of what causes them to swarm and this next step is how we prevent that from happening. At least one or two scavengers will hear the gunshots and will run to investigate. You can identify them by the yellow arrow on the radar and you can see their shields are up. Move away from your kill. Line of sight is how you will control this battle. So the aim is to put something between you and wherever the scavengers are as often as you can. You will see me doing this throughout the guide. If the scavengers cannot see you, then they won't even know you're there. We now move to our next position. This phase of the strategy I call relocation and you needn't move too far. Here you can see I'm moving around the edge of the settlement, staying hidden from sight and moving across to the next building on the roof. What we're looking for is another target without their shields up. Here is one. As you gain confidence, do not hesitate to take a shot if it presents itself to you. Even if you do miss, as you see me doing here, you can simply switch to the relocating phase and try again. Staying around to fight means the scavenger will return fire and this will alert many more scavengers and cause them to swarm. If you do get spotted, you can run away and use line of sight to lose the scavenger. You can see I wasn't paying attention at this point and a scavenger was investigating the sound of my last shot, which came from this roof. In this sequence, you can see that I'm escaping, but I'm not using line of sight very well. The scavenger that spotted me will keep chasing because they can still see me. So I can stop this by getting close to these buildings here. And sure enough, as I round this corner, you can see my fourth target is still unaware of everything going on because they're sufficiently distant from the original gunshots. So I take my opportunity and get my fourth kill before relocating again. One quick tip to mention at this point, if you sprint, your aim will have a lot of sway when you attempt to aim down sights immediately afterward. Bear this in mind when relocating in a hurry. You may need to wait a moment to let the sway calm down before pulling the trigger. From here, you can now see my whole route around the outskirts of the settlement. Each time I encounter a shieldless target, I attempt to kill them and then relocate to my next position. Here you can see I missed my fifth attempt and double back on myself to evade them instead of allowing the fight to escalate. This eventually leads me to my fifth kill, which is the scavenger who was chasing me before. They have given up, their shields are down, and so I move in for the kill. The last segment of the guide will focus on the wrapping up phase. It's up to you when you begin to wrap up the remaining scavengers. You may want to repeat the kill and relocate phases until all of the scavengers are dead, but as you gain confidence and you've whittled their numbers down sufficiently, you'll begin to feel more comfortable with rounding up the remaining targets with a more direct approach. When you're ready for the final push, I recommend taking a more direct route through the settlement to make sure you don't miss any stragglers. And if you want to just take them on directly, pick a suitable position to defend, such as a roof, and use cover between shots and kill them all. Sometimes there may be one remaining scavenger and you'll often find them off on their own near to the perimeter. By now, you can approach them with full confidence and move in for the final kill. That concludes Combat Stealth Basic Training. Before I sign off, I want to give a big shout out to the Burr Pit, who very kindly featured this channel in their news this week. 
The Burr Pit has long been a favourite channel of mine and they deliver frequent and factual updates on all things related to Elite Dangerous in a balanced way that I think is absolutely spot on. Those of you who have followed their recommendation and have subscribed to my channel this week, welcome to the channel. For those who haven't yet heard of The Burr Pit, I highly recommend you follow the link in the description below and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay stealthy, Commanders.